Get ready, my soul. Oh, today's topic is digging deep. Dig deep. <laughs> you know, the topics for the science of mind, the Centers for Spiritual Living, are prepared for us. And it's a suggestion. We can use it or not use it. And today's uh, topic was contributed by Shahrazad Taylor from Living Aligned. And I also want to thank Reverend Jane Beach for her generous sharing. And also I'm going to use some of Robert Holden's books. Now, Robert Holden wrote Happy Since Now, Shift Happens. Uh, he also wrote Life Loves You, co-written with Louise Hay. So this is digging deep. You know, I, I'm, I want to talk about these topics because having the topic makes me dig deeper into something I ordinarily wouldn't. You know, on one hand, I'm retired. Why would I want to dig deep at this point? I just kind of like to float along. It's, it's really comfortable. I'm comfortable. Everything in my life is, is working. And, and yet there is something that says you could go a little deeper. I was reminded of this last week as Reverend Kit told us about the African proverb, Alone, we can go faster. Together, we can go further. And so alone, I've been traveling fast in my life. At least I thought so. But now I want to go further. And so going further requires me to dig a little deeper. See, I totally believe in the evolutionary vision of the Centers for Spiritual Living. So this is what it says. It says, we see a world in which every person lives in alignment with his or her highest principle, emphasizing unity with God and connection with each other. Connection with each other. Oh, okay. A world in which individually and collectively we're called to a higher state of consciousness and action. So if I'm going to be part of this community, I have to allow myself to be called to that higher state. It means I have to dig deep. Okay then. Well, why is it that I'm even willing to do that? It's because of the Declaration of Principles, which we also read last week. And, and this is what it says. It says, we believe in the incarnation of spirit in all people and that all people are incarnations of the one spirit. All people. That means me, that means you, that means the I am. All people are incarnations of the one spirit because God is all there is, that's it. So we're all perfect and whole, spiritual beings and expressions of the divine. This is our true nature. It is who and what we are. It's true for us, it's true for all people. And when we attune ourselves to that spiritual magnificence we are free to effectively serve ourselves and the world once we know who we are we recognize this divine spirit in other people knowing that we're all one and then we can use these spiritual tools that we learn here to deepen political social spiritual consciousness so we join with our sisters and brothers with our family and this brings us a life through this interconnectedness for a world that works for everyone. So first I wanna to refer to Robert Holden. He declares that your soul's assignment is love. <laughs> Did you ever wonder why you were here? Okay, this is it. Your soul's assignment is love. You were created to express love. He tells us you were created out of God's desire for self-expression. I've heard God is love. So everything that I do needs to invite love into my life and bring that presence of spirit into the world through me. So the primary purpose of life, the soul's assignment, is to be an open channel for love, allowing in Oh, and letting out that divine love. So again, we are created out of love's desire for self-expression. 
And that means to me that my job is to discover and then uncover the love that is inside. So the full expression of that soul's love, soul's assignment to bring love to the world through you, through me. And yet our human condition is full of challenges. Many of us may have left us feeling uh, we weren't loved or we don't know how to give love. We don't have love to give. Or um, one of my things was um, I was unwanted and so therefore unloved. And of course, none of that's actually true. In truth, I am the expression of love. So in spite of that human drama, and we all have it, we're here to heal that, to forgive those who we think may have hurt us, who appear to have hurt us, and just get on with our life. And yet this sounds good. This sounds like, okay, get on with it. But it's not necessarily that easy. And what do I do if I don't trust life? What do I do if I don't believe that life is for me. See, we are more than our history. Everything that's ever happened in this life is recorded in the subconscious mind. Opinions, feelings, wounds are all there, just below the surface. I don't know about you, but every once in a while they pop up and I have to say, what was that? Anyhow, all that has contributed to who you are today but it doesn't mean it has to limit you for the rest of your life. So just because you survived a rough childhood or a rough marriage, that doesn't make you merely a survivor. You are a perfect spiritual being created by the divine. And that is the truth of you. And so just because you've been wounded or hurt or betrayed doesn't mean you have to live the rest of your life as a victim. Again, I refer to Robert Holden. He tells a story. He said, once I had the pleasure of spending an afternoon with a personal physician to the Dalai Lama. And we all shared our personal experiences inside. And one point, Robert asked him what he considered to be the key to health and happiness. And this is what he said. He replied, empty your bowl of yesterday's rice. And so yesterday's rice is our past, the old disappointments, grievances, wounds. Many, many times I've replayed past mistakes, heartbreaks, moments of weakness, just like the sticky rice clinging to the sides of the bowls of our minds. You're a powerful co-creator. So don't create tomorrows that look like yesterday. We just jump off of that merry-go-round of repetitious living. And we have to change the future. And the way we change the future is to change the perspective. We've heard this many times, change your thinking, change your life. So to change the future, change the perspective. See, because as a child, we were taught what to think, how to respond to different situations, whether the responses were empowering or defeating, wasn't something that I could even discern. I just knew that this is the way that you handle these things. You know, for me, it was, you know, building a shield to say, okay, you can't, you can't reach me. Uh, but over time, I found that that wasn't working. And so I had to reevaluate the choices that I made. And although the people that were around me and my family had absolutely the best intentions, I had to decide, are those opinions mine truly? Or are they programmed responses that I learned a long time ago? And I remember reading Illusions by Richard Bach and he reminds us in there, argue for your limitations and they're yours. And this phrase stuck with me, not the least of because Shortly after I read it and Rob read it, I was, okay, I was arguing for my limitation. <laughs> and he quoted that to me. Now, that was not a happy moment 
but it was so true. I needed to hear it. So everything changes when we begin to value ourselves because we know the universe responds to our thoughts. And so as we value ourselves, we get situations that affirm the new beliefs. I remember just starting out in a, a career in business, the best thing that I did was to create my resume because I looked at that resume and I said, darn, I'd hire her. And so that self-worth then gave me the confidence to go get a position that I wanted. So self-worth, know that you are worthy of the kingdom. And that self-acceptance sets the universe in motion on your behalf. That divine works in us, as us, through us, and for us. So if you're willing to give from who you are and accept, accept the good that is being prepared just to be dunked in your lap, then that universe is moving with you. So the friendship, the love, the attention that you give comes back to you. Maybe not exactly from that person, maybe from a different person, but it comes back in the form of meaningful relationships, health, vitality, a career that's fulfilling, prosperity in every area of your life, and a feeling of belonging. That you belong in your own skin. Living the life that you're living with just that quiet reassurance that all is well and it's getting even better. And why is that? Because who you are being, when you are being more of who you are, you quit resisting the spiritual truth. Once you quit resisting that spiritual truth, you move into that love, into that light, into that ease and grace. And that's much easier to love when we believe in some sort of higher power that's working for us. When we believe that this higher power, this universe is friendly to us. And when we trust that whatever is in front of us is somehow for us and never against us. Robert Holden wrote the book, Life Loves You. And in conversation with Louise Hay, he said, sometimes it sounds more like words and the words are too good to be true. And so she asked, he asked Louise why sometimes those thoughts that were not worthy, that were not loved, cross our minds. He says, it's taken me a while to let myself hear these words. And, and she said, not everyone can hear them. And Robert said, well, sometimes they sound like the gospel truth, but other times they feel like a positive affirmation that are just words. And Louise said, I know how that feels. So why do we find it difficult to hear these words? We don't believe them. And why is that? We don't believe in ourselves. We don't believe in ourselves sometimes. So if there's a higher power that is love, and you were born from that, then that love, prosperity, wisdom, wholeness, and joy are your nature. And if the universe is friendly, it's on your side. I like to think that the universe is conspiring in my favor. It just is a wonderful conspiracy theory. The universe is conspiring in my favor for the highest good of all concern. And so how do we help ourselves and others become that spiritual being that we truly are to unfold that, to discover it, to uncover it? Well, one way is by putting that spirituality first. And okay, this means a spiritual practice. Every day, a disciplined spiritual practice. And this could include that affirmative prayer, uh, meditation, 
just that commitment to personal growth and deepening in consciousness, maybe by asking ourselves the hard questions. But these spiritual tools that we have allow us to create and to remember who we really are, to create that new sense of self, which is free from judgment, free from criticism of ourselves and of others. And so as a community, we courageously encourage that speech and actions that cherish divinity. We cherish that love. We cherish the diversity among us. And we take action that recognize the strength of people working together for a world that works for everyone. See, the gift of you starts today. And if you've struggled to be happy in the past, those struggles don't define you today. That divine is within you now. It's always been in you. The difference is now you know. So every day we make a thousand choices. We decide when to get up. We decide what to wear, where to go, who to meet, who not to meet, what to do. But most importantly, we choose what to think. So we think like 2,000 thoughts every hour. Uh, okay, so what are you thinking right now? Oh, don't tell me. Choosing our thoughts creates a life of peace or one of turmoil. It's our choice. A life of gratitude or a life of lack. We were given free will. That means we get to choose. So we choose in every moment. We make a decision whether something is good or bad, for us or against us. And because our thoughts are creative, we get to be right. If we believe a situation is somehow for us, it is. And we'll start looking for what to be grateful for. And in the moment we decide the situation is for us, the experience of the situation changes, as does the outcome, because we have changed. So that real you at the core of your being is unconditionally accepting. It's seeing through the eyes of love and peace and potential. And it means seeing through the eyes of an unconditioned self. And the world becomes a gentler place. And so there really is a big picture for everything in your life. And you don't need to know what it is. Your faith and trust are enough to move you through with grace. So recognizing that that beloved created you to live your best life. It gave you the talents to reach your dreams, to speak your mind, to give you to give that unique gift of yourself to life. And this is your divine calling, to live and express your best life. <laughs> As I was composing this morning's message, I was often distracted by other things. Oh, you know, there's something on the floor over there. Oh, oh, the dog needs to be fed. Oh, uh, what about those appointments? Uh, oh, it's fall, I should, I should <laughs> take down the spring decorations. So many things distract me, and that's not even counting the computer, the phone, and the TV. A very long time ago, a friend of mine stated that she knew when she was in avoidance mode because she found herself ironing underwear. This is serious. So maybe it's just me resisting change, resisting that transformation, but it's going to happen. We're not the person we were five years ago. We're not even the person we were two years ago. Our thoughts, our priorities have changed. We see things differently. We've grown out of certain behaviors and maybe we've accepted some new ones. And let this be the effect of spiritual maturing. So the call for transformation is personal, it's individual. It's an awakening process. But once we feel the call, we're guided to get ourselves get our lives in order to heal resentments, forgive past mistakes, and then we live the love that we are. So give yourself credit for how far you've come. Think back to your life 10 years ago. What's changed? How have you changed? 
honor the process and the, the ideas that have come forward. 525,600 minutes. 5,025 moments, so dear. 525,600 minutes. How do you measure a year? This is from the song from Rent. Do you measure in daylights and sunsets and midnights and cups of coffee, in inches and miles and laughter and strife? How do you measure a year in the life? How about love? How about love? Measure in love, seasons of love. So this gift of you is right where you are. Every day is new. Every moment is new. What will you do with it? How will you give your love? How will you shine your light? How will you give your gift? And let's consider that as we move into our treatment today. How will you give your gift? And so remembering, remembering one power, remembering one infinite source, one divine mind, and knowing that we are all connected in that. Knowing that we are all connected. There is not one person who is left out. And I invite you to feel that connection for a moment right now. Just allow yourself to breathe in that connection with the divine, the divine breath. And notice that it takes an exhale as well. And so allow that divine breath to move out from you. You are the gift. This divine love that you are is the gift today. Dig deep. Allow that well of love to spring forth. Allow it to spring forth in a multitude of ways. Whatever is in your path, allow love to surround it. Whatever has been in your past, if it is still moving you, surround it with love. Let yourself move forward in love. And as you recognize that the love goes before you and it goes for you, the path is made clear the way is straight, no obstacle. And remember this, if it's not true of God, it's not true of me. And so coming from this place, knowing that I am a co-creator with the divine, I choose today to create love in the world. I choose to create perfect relationships. I choose to create friendships, connection in a multitude of ways. And knowing that that divine is my source, I choose to receive that love. I choose to receive an abundance in all things, an abundance of love, an abundance of life itself, an abundance of health, an abundance so much that I cannot help but share. And so knowing love, knowing that abundance, knowing health, knowing that that is the divine pattern, that there is nothing, nothing in the divine that speaks of any illness. There is only the perfection. I receive that perfection of health, the physical perfection, whatever it looks like, has that individual expression in my life. And knowing that there is one creative energy, I create my life in my time, in my talents, in my gifts. And I receive the gifts of others in gratitude. What a joy it is. What a joy. I'm so grateful and thankful I am just in love with the universe conspiring in life. And so I rest in that. I rest in the knowing that it is so. And I invite you to join me in affirming this by saying, and so it is. 